Hello and welcome back to All Irish Sports. This is the opposition preview. It's Republic of Ireland versus Belgium, Saturday, 5 pm Irish time. And uh, yeah, John O'Shea in and is interim manager for the Republic of Ireland against a very good Belgian side. I'm joined by Scott Coyne from the Belgian Football Podcast. How are you today, Scott? I'm great, Paul. How are you? It's nice to be back. Good, yeah. I'm just fresh back from the press conference there. John O'Shea in a good mood there. And uh, I'm sure you heard a little snippet there as a. Hello and welcome back to All Our Sports. This is the opposition preview. It's Republic of Ireland versus Belgium, Saturday, 5 pm Irish time. And uh, yeah, John O'Shea in and is interim manager for the Republic of Ireland against a very good Belgian side. I'm. Hello and welcome back to All Our Sports. This is the opposition preview. It's Republic of Ireland versus Belgium, Saturday. 5 p.m. Irish time, and uh, yeah, John O'Shea in and is interim manager for the Republic of Ireland against a very good Belgian side. I'm joined by Scott Coyne from the Belgian Football Podcast. How are you today, Scott? I'm great, Paul. How are you? It's nice to be back. Good, yeah. I'm just fresh back from the press conference there. John O'Shea in a good mood there, and uh, I'm sure you heard a little snippet there as I was editing the uh, the press conference there he seems to be um in good form going into it and there seems to be a bit of a kind of positive air around the uh the camp at the moment which is good to see because it kind of went a bit stale towards the end under Stephen Kenny uh just in regard to results it wasn't that toxic but it was just kind of more of a results kind of um sort of thing but uh yeah talk to me about I suppose Belgium we're, we're here to kind of get the lowdown from the Belgian uh point of view no better man than yourself obviously you, you've kind of um ingrained yourself within the Belgian football kind of scene so you know everything you're a Belgian football expert if you're rather and uh yeah I suppose we know a few players in the squad but more so kind of um from your point of view who are you excited to see are, are you bringing in some fresh faces in this window that maybe weren't in before like the Irish team are well, the, the squad was kind of confirmed uh, at the end of uh, last week. Uh, they had a rather nice press conference at the, the, the Hergé Museum, which for Tintin fans will be a, a place of pilgrimage um, just outside Brussels. Um, and the, the press conference kind of confirmed a number of things. One of them was that the squad was pretty much exactly as we expected with one outlier. Um, they have included um, Coney de Winter, who is a quite exciting 21-year-old centre-back who's playing his football at Genoa at the moment. He's been doing pretty well for a little while now. Um, and Domenico Tedesco, um, who's obviously taken over from Roberto Martinez, um, has been out to see De Winter a couple of times. Um, and this is obviously his last opportunity, really, to have a kind of close look at him before the Euros. Um, so Coney De Winter is a player who may, depending on circumstances, squeak into that final Euros squad in, in a number of weeks. Um, so the next few days is going to be very important for him, I think, because um, it's his last chance to kind of make that impression. Um, other than Coney De Winter, the squad was pretty much exactly as expected. No real surprises um, in there. Um, lots of people that, that Ireland fans will know. In fact, there's eight players in that squad who play their club football in England. Um, you know, which is which is a lot. You know, Castagne, Fass, Tielemans, Onana, Trossard, Doku, Kaminsky, and Sales all play their club football in England at the moment. So there'll be a lot of faces in there that, that Ireland fans are are familiar with. One player who I've really enjoyed watching during the qualification campaign. Um, for the Euros for for, for Belgium is uh, Dodi Lukabakio, who plays his club football in Sevilla at the moment. He's He's been really good during qualifying, two goals and three assists in, in his five games. And um, he just looks like a player who enjoys playing international football. Uh, really exciting forward, big chance creator, um, starting to, to produce some output himself as well now, obviously, which is important. Um, and he, I think, will be a key part of that front Three, three now for for Belgium. Yeah, probably Lukabakio on the right, um, and either um, Doku or Trossard on the left with with Lukaku up top. Um, he's I he's a really good... out, out injured. That's the good news. Um, yeah, from an Ireland perspective, a couple of big bits of good news. Um, Lukaku is carrying a slight knock. He has travelled. He's with the squad, but he will not play 
um, in Dublin. Uh, they're saving him up to unleash him against England uh, at Wembley on, on, on Tuesday evening. He will play there. Um, the other miss, um, and he's a massive miss, obviously, is uh, Kevin De Bruyne. He's purposely been left out of, of the squad for this game um, and the game on Tuesday against England uh, because he's also um, injured. Um, everybody knows about Jeremy Doku. Um, I mentioned him. He's he's definitely one to watch out for. He's just gone from strength to strength, really. And thankfully, has remained largely injury free. He was having problems for a long time, but since his move really to to, to Manchester City, he has kicked on in a way that we would all want him to. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of these faces are are, are very well known to people now. Belgium are now led by Domenico Tedesco. He took over from Roberto Martinez just over a year ago now and has remained undefeated since he's come in. They've kind of cruised their qualifying for the Euros, winning six, strong two, not losing any. Uh, top scorers, um, best defence. Um, it's, it's kind of all rosy at the moment. And what he's done really well, I think, is um, just renew the squad a little bit. There was an expectation when Remar Martinez left after the World Cup, that it was time to kind of start a, a new cycle, if you like. And that's really what's happened. There, there's plenty of experience still in that squad, but we've seen some fresh faces come in um, and, and kind of rise to the occasion. And everyone's feeling um, quite a bit better about themselves at the moment. Yeah, well, I think, obviously, we we played each other, I think it was two years ago now. And I think you, that was kind of a warm-up game as well for, I, was it the World Cup? I think it was. Uh, it was kind of one last chance to give Roberto Martinez a, a look at some players who were going to come in and, and you know see how they could perform. I think Amadou Onana was obviously one of them uh, as well. I think he'll be probably a key player for you as well. Is he is he in the squad and fit? And I know he's carrying yes, a couple he, of knocks at Everton. Yeah, he, he is in the squad. Uh, I would expect him to, to to play. That's actually an interesting one. That central midfield role as well, because there's a, there's a player in the squad um, uh, called Arthur Ramirez. Um, who is a, a big rising talent, a 19-year-old midfielder, um, kind of performs a similar function uh, profile-wise to, to Anana. Um, he's he's had a, a tiny amount of game time, has only very recently broke into the, the national team setup. Um, he's in the squad as well, and you know he he may feature at some point um, in the game too. But I would expect expect Anana to start. I know that the there's not too many injury worries from a Belgian perspective. Um, Arthur Tiat, centre back, um, he may not start. He's carrying a slight knock, and this is where Coney De Winter becomes more important. I'd be interested to see if he starts instead of Arthur Tiat. Um, Aurel Mangala um, is also carrying a knock obviously Lukaku's got his, his groin strain uh, so he definitely won't play um, and the other the other slight injury concern is around uh, Kuhn Castile's uh, goalkeeper Wolfsburg keeper, he's got a shoulder knock he's interesting actually because the only real downside to Dominic Tedesco's kind of first 12 months has actually been the big falling out with Thibaut Courtois um, around the captaincy um, and, and Tedesco's kind of been forced to kind of have a closer look at Kuhn Castiles as the potential new number one or Matt's sales at Nottingham Forest. So they've both started three games each um, in, in kind of qualifying and nobody really knows yet who the, the number one going into the Euros for Belgium is going to be. Um, if, if Castiles knock uh, takes him out of that game, then sales will start. So that's another thing to look out for. Who might start uh, uh, Mill? I just lost the last kind of second of there. You just said who might start, and then it just went a little bit funny. Got yeah, I think I think it's, it's 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 another thing just to watch out from from a Belgian perspective is is who might start in goal because there's no Courtois, um, and there will be no Courtois for the foreseeable future. Tedesco confirmed actually last week as well at his press conference that he won't be back as long as he's there, and um, that relationship's gone now. Um, Dominico Tedesco actually had his contract renewed last week as well for another two years, so um, th there'll be no Courtois for for yeah for, for a while anyway. Um, so yeah, the big question around the goalkeeping position is whether it will be Kuhn Castiles or or Matt's Sells uh, both for this game and and going into the Euros as well. Yeah, well, I think uh, you know you've kind of mentioned players there who obviously um, have have brought experience to the squad. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this Irish squad this time around is this, there's only like two or three actual uh, experienced players that are in the squad. A lot of the young players now have become experienced because they were literally thrown into the deep end and, and had to kind of 
learn on the job, I suppose. So there's there's young players there like Jason Knight and stuff like that who are above yeah. twenty caps now, and Gavin Bazunu and, and these types, um, and they're all kind of playing their um their, their club football mainly in um in England. But to someone who who you might have known through his Belgian football days was uh Jake O'Brien at Molenbeek, and he was in the he got promoted there and he's gone on to Leon and you spoke about Jeremy Doku who's who's gone to strength to strength but I I would look not that maybe at the same level but Jake is gone as pretty much being an obscure player at Leon to one of the first names on the list I think he was in the league on team of the year so far uh, as well um he's popped up with crucial goals crucial assists and obviously big performances and I think that he'll be in line for a a start against Belgium and I think he deserves it if he does yeah, definitely. I mean, he um, he was at um, Molenbeek um, in in Belgium, who kind of are in the relegation playoffs at the moment, left before before the current season kind of started, and and they were really keen to hold on to him. And um, for those who don't know, kind of Molenbeek are actually uh, part of a, a multi club network, um, which is actually owned by uh, John Texter, who who owns uh, Leon, where where Jake is now. So in some ways, that that was probably the right natural progression for him. There was a little bit of a worry at the time that maybe that had come a little bit too soon for him. There was a bit of hype around Jake, which I think probably was justifiable. Um, you know he's he's gone to France and he's actually done very well and kind of shown that he was he was he was ready for for that next that next step. Um, Molenbeek fans are, are still very fond of kind of Jake O'Brien. Um, you know, un, un, understandably, um, they're they're having a tough time at the moment. Uh, Molenbeek and I, I think they I think they really miss a character, a player. You know, um, who has the qualities that that he does. They 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 miss him. You know, hugely. I think. Um, at the, at the moment. Another player, of course, in that Ireland squad um, who will be very familiar to uh, Belgian fans generally is um, Josh Cullen as well. You know, had a fabulous time at Anderlecht. Um, great, great relationship with Vincent Company. Um, takes him to, to, to Burnley. Such a, such a clever player. Um, and even even if he's not fit, he's worth having in your squad, Josh Cullen, just because of the the yeah the atmosphere and the impact he has w- w- with other players. Um, he's one of those players who um, brings a lot off the pitch as well. Um, yeah, kind of g- great great plus to have in that Ireland squad. Yeah, I think it's gonna it's gonna be so interesting because obviously you have Jay coming in there um, for his first cap. Um, You've got Mikey Johnson, who's coming in really good form at at West Brom from his move from Celtic. Give Adam Eda, who's been scoring goals at Celtic, um, and you've got Chiodozio Benny, who's going well at Luton Town as well. Is it from an Irish point of view? Is there anyone that you know you're looking at and you're kind of going, "Oh, I don't fancy facing him." Like I you know Evan Ferguson's not really been scoring, but a lot of um, opposition previews have had in the past. A lot of people seem to fear him, but is there anyone? Because this is the first time in a long time yeah. Irish players are coming in to an international window off a bit of form, and especially our forward players. I haven't even mentioned Sammy Smodix, who has like twenty-seven yeah. goals in all competitions. Well, you mentioned Adam Ida there. I mean, he's. I think he's a he, he's a player who could potentially cause Belgium problems. I mean, for a long time now, the the Belgian defence for well, what feels like years probably has been everybody's biggest worry. That there, there is quality in that defence, but when Domenico Tedesco took over, there was a, a real feeling that the defence in particular needed refreshed. It needed renewed, and he has. He's he, he's largely done that. Um, he, he's, he's doing it in the kind of uh, a gentle transitionary way. You know, he's brought in uh, Arthur Tiati, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, Vout Fass has now become a, a regular feature in there. Um, and he's got the experience still of Vertonghen and, and Castagna as well. So that's changing, but it's still everybody's kind of biggest worry. Um, a player like Adam Ida, who, who the physical side of his game is kind of quite good, I think. Um, you know, he has a, a mobility about him, I think, that could cause could cause problems. And he's been scoring goals for Celtic. You know, he's gone there and, um, you know, that's an environment where you really have to hit the ground running. And actually, he's done that. Um, he's, he's developed a really good relationship with Brendan Rodgers and has actually been keeping... Um, you know, um, uh, Kyogo Furuhashi out the side, who, you know, is an extremely talented uh, Japanese striker um, who, you know, was looked like he was set for a big move 
um, away from from Celtic before Brendan Rodgers came back. Um, so it's been a bit of a surprise, I think, that Adam Eder's done so well at Celtic. And it'll be interesting to see how much, if any, game time he gets um, in the game because I, I, I think he's a player who could definitely cause the, the Belgian defence some problems, particularly if he's given some, some service as well. The midfield's going to be very important, I think, in this game. Um, I, I think Ireland have to try and you know control the midfield as much as possible to just get a, a hold on the game. And um, if they don't do that, then you know it could be it could be a long evening for them. Yeah, well, I think, I, I think he he'll either start the Belgian game or he'll start the Swiss game. I think he'll, he'll be in line anyway. I think it's going to be between mm. him himself and Fergus, and I don't see it being a, a case of the two of them starting. And obviously, I mentioned Sammy Smoddox there, who I think is, I mentioned players who come in kind of fresh off the, you know, red off form. And we haven't had that in a long time. I think Smoddox being um, 27 goals, this is his first international window. We've tried to get him in, in, in the past. So I think it's going to be really interesting from an Irish point of view. And I think Irish fans just want to see us have a bit of a go. And, you know, try to score a couple of goals. If it does end in a 2-2 draw, I think a lot of fans will be happy with that. Do you know what I mean? I know, look... It's not exactly your A team uh, in that regard, obviously with with De Bruyne and stuff like that, uh, not in the squad. But I do think it's a still a very strong Belgian squad, and if we were to get some sort of result, I think that you know that builds a bit of uh, positivity there. And I think John O'Shea, I heard him today speaking, and I've heard him all week speaking, and he just seems to be not getting kind of too overawed by the by the whole kind of situation and being the Ireland manager and stuff like that. And I do think that if a couple of good results go our way, that he could actually be sitting in the hot seat come the end of the international window going into the summer because there's talks of a new manager coming in. But I do, do think this is a, a chance for the Irish players and John O'Shea to, um, you know, to give it a bash. And if it goes well, does, does that, it's, it's kind of like an audition almost, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the sort of game where, um, from an Ireland perspective, I mean, obviously it, it, it's a free hit, but they can go out there and express themselves against, you know, as you were saying, you know, a, a good side. I mean, the thing about Belgium actually at the moment is, you know, I was saying earlier that they'd cruised their qualifying campaign and, and Tedesco was undefeated, um, you know, in, in his first year. The one thing we don't know with this Belgium side yet is, and it's because they've not been tested, is how good they really are. You know, qualifying is a very different thing to, you know, playing a major tournament. Obviously, the psychology and mindset of that is is, is very different. Um, and this is a good game, I think, for both sides, really. Um, what Belgium are trying to do at the moment is set up some fixtures where they do get a little bit more of a test kind of coming into the tournament. So they've got the game... Um, in Dublin, and and then they go to Wembley um, next week as well, and then after that they've got games against uh, Montenegro and Luxembourg, and they're your classic, you know, shooting in a barrel game, you know, just before a tournament to get everybody's confidence up. Um, but certainly the game in Dublin and the game against England, are ab they've absolutely been chosen, um, you know, to play against a good level of opposition. Um, and that's something that that Belgium, to be honest, haven't really come up against for a while now and you know in qualifying they had Austria, Sweden, Azerbaijan and Estonia in their group and Sweden have, have not been uh, great for a little while now they're going through a big transition Austria probably gave them their their, their uh, stiffest test um, under under Ralf Ranić, who's a brilliant coach um, so yeah it's important that this Belgian side uh, plays against you know I, I think a decent opposition um you know, before the tournament a couple of times, and we're going to see that here. Um, their, 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 their group at the Euros is actually a very good one as well, and not one that I think will particularly test them. They'll be very pleased to have Romania, Slovakia, and we don't know who the winner of playoff path B is going to be yet, but I don't think it'll be anybody that's going to really concern them. So from a, a specifically Belgian perspective, they, they need, yeah, they need to up, up their game a little bit coming into this tournament and I feel that the game in Dublin and the game at Wembley um, can, can do that really nicely for them and from an Ireland's point of view um, it's a really good level of fixture um, at a side when there's a degree of transition obviously there for them as well particularly in a coaching sense not sure what's happening yet so John O'Shea understandably I think will you know be feeling quite good about this fixture and, and, and quite excited about it I mean why wouldn't you I mean there's some great players there to, to kind of come up against and to, to have a go yeah, well, that's what he said. They were, they were asked, would it not have been better to get someone easier to play against? He goes, no, but these, these are the, you know, the games that 
we want to play against the best teams. But I suppose just just to end it, uh, going into this one, how are you feeling? What's your score prediction? Um, I'm feeling quite positive just because, you know, things have been, as I was saying earlier, you know, people are feeling energised and more positive about Belgium again. There was a, a malaise for a long time towards the end of Roberto Martinez time and there's been lots of positives in the first 12 months under Domenico Tedesco, I think. So everybody's kind of feeling positive about almost everything other than the Courtois situation. Um, I think Belgium will come into this, you know, kind of quite motivated, to be honest. Um, and I can see Belgium winning maybe 2-0 on this occasion, if I was to put one out there. Yeah, I I, I can't see us winning. I'd be very surprised if we did, and, and I'd love if we did. But, uh, you know, you, similar to yourselves, I, I think there's a bit of a, an energy to this team now. There's a, there's a fresh kind of new vibe coming in, and I think it's a... It's a case of like go out there and try and get a result, and I do think that Belgium will probably take the lead. I think he's did that last time with Batshuayi scoring, um, yep. but I do think that we've got players in form now that I don't think we should be as maybe gun shy as we have been in the past or as pragmatic. I think this is a game where you know we want we want the players that we have there now to get us off the edge of our seats, and we've got some players there for the first time in a long, long time that we can say, okay, we've players in form. Let's let's try and have a go. Let's try and get at the defence. As you said, it's it's the weakest point of the Belgian side. Now we obviously have to be resolute when we're defending, but I do think there's enough there to uh, to try get somewhat of a result. I'm going to go for a one one. We're notorious for one one results. So um, if it's more than that and we got a two one one, I'd be delighted. But I I'm going to go for a one one uh, draw uh, myself. So that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it'll be a good game regardless, I think. Um there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Well listen, Scott, um I am going to leave you to it and, and you know, and I'm sure you've plenty of other stuff. For anyone who may be wondering, where can they find you? Uh yourself and uh the Belgian Football Podcast, fire away there, plug it away. Yeah, well, I could be found in, in, in several places, uh, which is either good or bad, depending on which way you look at it. Um, I'm part of the three-man team behind the, the, the Belgian Football Podcast, so we produce a, a weekly show which covers all the, the news and action um, across the, 